giveaways, works in progress, fantasy knitting, and more. It's going to be a good episode. Junkies, welcome back to the Color Cauldron. I'm Johanna, the owner and dyer behind Potion Yarns and host of this podcast. Click that first link in the description box below and it'll take you to my online shop where you can shop for hand dyed yarns and fiber dyed in small batches by yours truly. And I thank you for watching this podcast. Today, if you're a new viewer, welcome, welcome. You came at a good time. We're just going to have a really relaxed episode today and a lot of fun, a chance to win some free yarn and goodies. Um, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back and thanks for coming back to try for round two of the giveaway. We are going to start off by talking about our giveaway and then I'm going to just going to share with you a little bit about what I've been knitting, working on, some things I'm dreaming about, etc. So if you watched the podcast last week, you already know that we have some fabulous prizes that you could win in this giveaway. All we're doing for this giveaway, it is a YouTube only giveaway, which means you can only win it by being a subscriber to my channel and leaving comments. It's not going to be happening over on Instagram or Facebook, even though I'll mention it on those channels. You have to be here on YouTube in order to win it. And in order to leave a comment, you will have to create a free account, but it's totally free. You can set it up with an assumed name if you want to protect your identity and all those things, but I will need to be able to get a hold of you. So um, you will need to have an email or some way that I can contact you. And um, you will have to have an account set up in order to leave a comment on the video and be considered in the giveaway. So make sure you do that. And then click that subscribe button below right now so that you will be eligible to win the giveaway. That way you'll get all of the notifications of my upcoming videos. You'll have the chance at winning some free yarn and you'll also have another chance next week because this is a three week long giveaway, which means we started it last week and some people already entered that giveaway. If you haven't, you can go back to that video, watch it, answer the question that I ask in there and then you'll get entered an additional time for the giveaway. Plus you have today, there'll be a new question for you to answer. Leave a comment answering that question and make sure you're subscribed and that'll get you a second entry. And then next week will be the final installment where you will get a third question. You answer that and make sure you're still subscribed and you will get a third entry. So you can have anywhere from one to three entries, but there is only one comment per video allowed. So you can only have one entry per video, but you can have up to three entries. And then after next week's video, I will be tallying up all of the answers using a random name selector to run everybody's name through a random number generator. And then I will be um, announcing the winner after that. So good luck. Let's find out what you're going to win. We have this really phenomenal project bag. This was created by Georgianne over at the Stitching Plaza. I will leave a link to her YouTube channel below. Um, right after my shop link, you'll have a link to her YouTube channel. So go subscribe to her and watch her videos. Tell her how much you absolutely love this beautiful potion bottles bag she created for me. Perfect for potion yarns. And I love that it has the little wrist strap. It holds a lot of stuff in there. I have a small sweater quantity in there right now and I still have plenty of room. So it's really, really awesome. And it has a really great lining inside and it's got this really great zipper. I love zipper bags more than drawstring bags personally. So I'm really excited about that. So you will be getting this bag. This one is mine. So you won't be getting it covered in my baby cat's hair. Mine is loved, much loved by my kitty. She loves to lay on it while I'm knitting um, and get her little hairs all over it. But yours is sealed up and folded up all nice and neat and crisp and shiny new. And so you will be getting a sealed packaged version that will be devoid of cat hair if you win. Um, but I didn't want to take it out of the package because I wasn't sure I could get it folded back up to show you. So I just thought I'd show you mine. And then there is a chance for you to win that one on the podcast. And then I'm going to stuff it with goodies. So thank you, Georgian, for donating that. Here's what I'm going to be donating. I am stuffing it with two skeins of hand dyed yarn from my shop. The first one is 100% Superwash Polworth DK weight and it's tea with a bashful griffin which is a fun summery colorway with coral and sea glass aqua and kind of some bright white space. There's 246 yards in this skein so it's enough for you to make a great project like a hat or some gloves or something small like a little short cowl. I'm also going to be giving you a skein of Harvest Moon which is a really great fall pumpkin spice colorway. Lots of uh, rich golds, oranges, paprika, some browns, some burgundy. And um, you will be getting a skein of this in my Gaia Fingering, which is a 100% superwash merino two-ply sock yarn. 
So this is 400 yards of yummy, delicious goodness for the fall, plus a nod to our passing summer with Tea with a Bashful Griffin in DK. In addition to that, I am also going to be giving you, I'm not gonna take it out of the package. If you wanna see details, go back and watch last week's video, but I will also be giving you a little stitch marker. It was handcrafted in polymer clay by the lovely Wanda over at Silly Sheep Designs, and it's in the shape of an anatomical heart. So it's a deep red color dipped in a black glitter glaze, and it is so cool. It is my favorite stitch marker that I own, and Wanda just does an incredible job. I have a ton of her stitch markers and just love them, and she has just beautiful things in her shop. I will put a link to her shop below as well so you can go see her yummy goodness and buy some stuff. She also hand dyes small batches of yarn, and um, my favorite thing besides her stitch markers that she sells is she is a hand spinner. She has everything on a drop spindle, I believe, and she makes incredibly gorgeous hand spun yarns and sells them. I have been incredibly lucky to purchase some of her beautiful hand spun before, and I made my very favorite winter hat I've ever worn last year with some of her gorgeous hand spun. So go check her shop out, give her some love, tell her how much you love her stitch markers, and enter to win the giveaway so you can get one of her fabulous anatomical heart stitch markers. They were a limited edition for the Edgar Allan Poe set that I did last year, and so you're not gonna get a chance to get these again in the shop for at least a while. I'm not sure if she'll ever bring them back. They might have just been last year for me only, or she may do them again, I don't know, but they're just incredibly detailed and beautiful, so you definitely will want one. So that's all the great, amazing stuff you can win. So what's your question for this week? You can't just leave any old comment and get an entry. This week we are going to have a specific question that I want you to answer. So last week there was a specific question, and I'm gonna make you watch the video from last week in order to know the question and go answer it. This week, our question is, what do you think about yarn clubs? And this is a multi-part question, so give me as many answers to this as you can. Do you ever participate in yarn clubs? And if so, what would make you interested in purchasing a yarn club? Now, what I mean by a yarn club is um, when dyers put out a specialty limited edition skein of hand dyed yarn or hand spun or whatever, that is based around a theme usually, not always, but usually, and is specifically only available that month as a club. So each month there's a different yarn. Sometimes this is like a subscription box where you enter your credit card information and every month you get charged the same amount and then they ship out on the same date the new month's yarn. Sometimes it's like that, but I don't do it that way in my shop. Um, I found that there's a lot of people that really wanna participate but they're scared off from committing to six months or a whole year. And I'm also having a little trouble with my website right now setting up the credit card processing so that it goes through um, without being a big headache for me. So while I'm getting those bugs worked out, I've been doing just one month only, which is really low commitment for you. You don't have to sign up for a whole year. You don't have to worry about canceling a subscription if you don't like it after three months or whatever else. You just purchase each month. So the bad thing is you do have to remember to go on each month, but if you join my email newsletter list, you always get newsletters that update you and let you know when the new yarn clubs are up for order, sometimes even give you a discount or a coupon code that you can use. Um, and so you're always able to do that. If you follow my Instagram or my Facebook, I always announce it on there and make a big deal out of it so that you have the chance to win the yarn or to purchase the yarn that you want, but then you only pay for that one month and you only get that one month. So if you need to take a couple months off, you don't have to order the next couple months and then you can get back in whenever you want to. So that's how I do mine right now. So based on that, what would convince you to order a subscription box? Would you be more likely to order it if you literally did just put in your credit card one time and then got charged every month for it? Or would you be more likely to put it in, buy it all at once for one discounted rate and then you know, you pay whatever, 600 bucks or whatever it is for all of your yarn for the year and then you get a skein every month shipped out to you but you just pay once up front? or do you like the every month thing? And then what would make you want to purchase a subscription box? What do you like or not like about, um, or maybe I should say a yarn club, because mine aren't really a subscription box currently, but what would make you participate in a yarn club? Do you like the limited edition things? Do you like mystery yarn clubs where you just get to see the inspiration photo but you don't actually see the yarn until it arrives in your mailbox, or is that too risky for you? Do you like that it's just yarn only, so you're only paying for the skein of yarn and then you can do whatever you want with it? Or do you prefer having lots of little goodies in there too, like an enamel pin and some stitch markers, maybe a pattern or pattern suggestions at least, or um, like other little things, even if they're not yarn related, like tea and candy and little trinkets and goodies, tape measures, etc. 
what would make you want to? Would that be increase the likelihood even though you'd have to pay more for it? Or would you rather just pay for the yarn and you can go get your own stitch markers and tape measure and all of that jazz? I'm just working on thinking about my yarn clubs for the next year. I'm gonna continue with the setup that I have right now through the end of this year, but I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna do any yarn clubs at all next year, or if I just wanna let it go by the wayside. And if so, what would make them more of a, a worth my time putting in, if that makes sense. So let me know what you think about yarn clubs, yays, nays, things you like, don't like, and what would make you most likely to purchase them in the comment below. And then you will get entered for another entry to win the giveaway. So now I wanna share with you guys what I've been working on, what I've been knitting right now. So the first thing that I have is almost done. I do still have a little bit more of the, um, the end of the shawl to make, but I have been knitting the Path to Wonderland shawl. And ooh, this is it in all of its beauty so far. I just really was wanting a really good, easy garter stitch, not have to think about it too much, not have to consult a pattern too much, easy to memorize, simple, but to show off some really beautiful indie dyed yarns that I had. So I spent hours and hours on Ravelry, purchasing, favoriting, and trying to decide between lots of different patterns. And I purchased several and also found some free ones. And this was one that is a four purchase pattern. I will put the link below, but it's called Path to Wonderland. And it's really great because you just need two skeins of yarn. It's fingering weight and it takes one each of the skeins. And so you really can use variegated or speckled on one color and then it works really well with a solid or semi-solid as the other color to kind of ground it so it's got really good contrast. And you want a lot of contrast for this so that your stripes when they're really, really tiny, like up at this section, really stand out well. But I have just loved this knit. It has been incredible. I absolutely love how easy it is. It's great for nights when I'm really tired or I have a headache and I just want something to keep my hands busy, but I don't want to have to think or do something really complicated. It's really great for TV watching um, or any time that you can be knitting, but you need your attention to, you need to be able to look up frequently or kind of give your attention to something else, but just keep your hands busy. Um, it's also really great for beginners if you're new and you want to tackle shawl knitting. This is a really easy pattern that I would highly recommend and there's so many beautiful color combinations. I am using a skein of Inked Sheep Fibers from Talia Shop. I love this. I cannot remember the colorway and I apologize, but I think it was one of her World of Warcraft colorways. I don't remember for sure though. Oh wait, I just remembered it. It's called Sunwell. I don't remember how I remembered that because I didn't know it, <laughs> but I just remembered it. It's called Sunwell and I absolutely love the golds and oranges and reds. It just has this like really great semi-solid shifting tonal background and then she just punctuated it with a random smattering of black speckles. So it is phenomenal. And then I'm just striping it with a solid black. This is actually not an indie dyed skein at all. It is just the Jojo Land Ballad um, Superwash Merino Sock Yarn. They come in these little 50 gram balls. So I just have two of them that I'm using. Um, and I'm not even gonna need to use most of the second one. I'm just gonna use it for the ending. So I'll probably use like a third or so of that skein. And um, I just really liked the way the colors look together. Although after I cast on, so you start at this end where it's really tiny and then you work your way up. And I got to about here on the stripes and started having a panic attack. And I was like, I do like the colors, but at the same time, it's a lot more intense and like vivid and dark than I was thinking. The sample pattern is shown in like kind of a white background with a bunch of speckles and then a black. And I love the high contrast of the white and black with just a few speckles on it. And so originally I was gonna go that route and dye up a yarn specifically for it, or maybe use one of my lighter colored speckles like um, Tempest in a Teapot that's like a really soft dove gray background with some darker speckles on it because I wanted that high contrast. But I really wanted to use the sun well and I thought it would look really good with the black. I started knitting it and then had this like panicky moment where I was like, I don't think I like this. But my husband voted yes, he loved it. And then I put up a picture of it so far, just like a little bit of it on um, Facebook, on one of my knitting groups that I'm in. And everybody that commented was like, no, don't, don't take it out and use another yarn. You should just keep going with this. I think you'll really like it. You can always knit another one later if you don't and give this one away. So I decided to keep going with it, but I started calling it my path to hell shawl. <laughs> and it was not because it was awful. The pattern has been so easy. I've had zero problems with it. It's actually been a total delight to knit. However, I told my husband when I was 
like, I don't know if I like these colors. I think I'm thinking about ripping them out. And he was like, I don't think you should do that. I think it's cool. And I said, well, it is cool, but it kind of reminds me of hell because it's like, it looks like fiery flames and then all this black. And I just feel like it's very like hellacious. <laughs> so I started calling it the path to hell shawl. And I haven't entered a project page on Ravelry yet because I've been so busy getting ready for my yarn crawl this weekend I'm doing in Texas that I just have not been on Ravelry like at all. So if you've sent me a message on Ravelry and I haven't responded, I apologize. That's just what I do sometimes. I don't check Ravelry very often. So um, I need to get a project page up because I really am enjoying this and I really want to call it my path to hell shawl and then explain that it's not the fault of the pattern at all it's just my color choices but I love it though I highly recommend it especially if like I said if you want something easy and simple and quick it's going so fast I don't even think it was a week ago that I cast this on um, and I've been working on other projects as well it might have been right around around a week but I've been working on like four projects so it's almost done going so fast and I love it it's a really good way to showcase a great speckle or variegated yarn and it'll be really really fun for you I think really easy and fun okay what else the next thing that i've been working on is a new pair of socks i mentioned a couple weeks ago that i am doing the box of socks cal that kristen does on the yarngasm podcast in her ravelry group she does the box of socks cal every year i think and um it's just really fun because you knit one pair of socks every month and then at the end of the year you have a box full of 12 beautiful pairs of socks or you can do a baker's dozen and do 13 or whatever so I started in um, January, actually like the last week of January, I was like casting on a new pair of socks and I was like, oh yes, the, I'm gonna join, here we go, I have one week. <laughs> but I made it, and so far I have made it every single month. I just, I've gotten close a couple times, but I've managed to get one done every month. So for August, I decided I was gonna do a pair of little shorty socks because I love cute little socks that are short and full, have a fold over little ruffly girly cuff that I can wear with like cute little T-strap retro heels or whatever. And I only have like one or two pairs that, I only have one pair that really has like a fold over cuff that I really like. And the, then the other pair doesn't really fold over. It just has like a little Pico border and it goes up a little higher. So it's not like a shorty sock, but I usually scrunch it down. So the Picos are like all scrunched around my ankle. Um, so it kind of works, but it isn't technically a shorty sock. So I decided to do um, a free pattern I found on Ravelry like years ago and I put in my library and then completely forgot about. And I apologize, this is not G-rated or even PG-rated. So warning, there is some scandalous language ahead. <laughs> it's not my fault, it's what the pattern is called. <laughs> so this is the Penis Poop Cake Waffle Sock. Yeah, and they do have a G-rated version that omits the um, phallic images if you prefer not to call yours penis whatever but I went ahead and decided to go for the full R-rated version. I don't know if you can see this very well but um, the lace cuff kind of looks like a certain male appendage <laughs> and it's really cute. They're actually pretty easy to knit. Um, I love this little cuff. It goes really quick and so you knit it on the right side and then you do like a turning row where um, you purl around so that when you fold it over you see the right side of the cuff, but that way you can do the bobbles on the right side and you don't have to worry about trying to do a bobble on the wrong side, which would be just crazy. So I really like it, it actually goes pretty quick. And then the body is just like some ribbing and then this little waffle stitch, which was so easy and quick to memorize and so, so pretty. I just love how it looks. And I love the contrast heel and toe that um, you can do to match the cuff. You don't have to do it, you could do it in all one color, but I loved how everybody was doing two color versions online on Ravelry. And so I decided to do mine in a really pretty sock yarn that I got in a yarn swap I did. If you guys have never heard of Fiber Share, I highly recommend you check it out. It's run through Instagram, so you have to have an Instagram account to do it. But it's um, this cool thing where you just sign up, you fill out a questionnaire about likes, dislikes, your hobbies, etc. And um, then you pay, it, it used to be $7. I haven't checked this year to see if it still is. But it's about $7, I think, for them to just do all the organizing and sending stuff out. So you pay like a $7 fee. And then you get the name of somebody 
and you send them a fiber share package. So um, you send them some yarn or spinning fiber or whatever and little gifts, whatever you want. And it's just a yarn swap basically. And then someone else who's a different person sends you yarn and you get a surprise package from somebody else and you don't get to know who it is ahead of time. Well, you can know. Some people tell their partners, some people don't. But um, you don't get to see what you get until it comes in the mail. It's a surprise. So I did uh, fiber share a couple times now and I'm gonna sign up again, which reminds me if you wanna sign up this weekend, um, August 25th, I believe, is the day that the signups go live. So this weekend, they're going to have a sign-up period for like a week or two. So you can go to, um, go just Google FiberShare and it should come out, or it should come up. Um, and that is F-I-B-R-E, not E-R, R-E, Fiber, FiberShare. And um, so you can sign up to be part of the yarn swap. But anyways, my fiber share partner last year sent me this absolutely gorgeous blue speckled yarn from Plymouth Yarn Company. So it's not a hand dyer, but it's really pretty. And I just love blues like this. This shade of blue is like to die for. And I thought it was so cute with just little plain white. Again, this is Jojo Land Ballad. Um, so really easy superwash merino, cheap commercial sock yarn in solid colors. And yeah, really easy and fun. I have only knit the one. So I kind of have second sock syndrome right now because I just finished this sock yesterday and I cast on the other one today and I've done exactly one round and then I just was like, I don't want to knit on it right now. I'm going to try to knit on it in the car tomorrow when I'm driving to Texas for my yarn show, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, the lace cuff is not great for TV knitting because you do have to pay attention a little bit more. You can do it, but it's, it'll be really good for card knitting, I think. So that's the other thing I've been working on. And I have one other work in progress, and then I have a couple fantasy knitting projects to share with you. So the other work in progress that I am doing is my floozy cardigan. You guys, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it. Um, this is a pattern by Libby Johnson of Truly Myrtle Designs. I found her through Instagram. Someone that I follow, uh, a knitter that I follow online, had posted a picture of one of her designs that she was knitting or something like that and said something about like I'm really loving this design and I really just love all the photos that she puts on her patterns. They're so beautiful or something like that. So I clicked over and she tagged her on Instagram. So I clicked over to Truly Myrtle Designs Instagram and started looking at her projects and she had an upcoming pattern that she was talking about and had photos of but hadn't released yet for the Flozy cardigan and I fell in love with it and then I learned that she was encouraging indie dyers to create kits um, because the indie dyers she worked with, she was specifically wanting to showcase indie dyed yarn and the indie dyer she worked with is where she lives down in New Zealand and so for a lot of um, international customers they were finding that the shipping rates of the yarn were just, was just a little high for them and um, also she's working with a one-woman show down there and so they were starting to get more demand than they could fulfill and so someone that I follow who's an indie dyer as well had said you know she's encouraging indie dyers to make kits so I'm gonna do it here's my kit versions or whatever and I thought oh well, I'm in love with this pattern and I think I could, it features speckled yarn on the body and I just love dyeing a good speckle. So I'm going to go for it. So I created four different gorgeous kits, which you can still find for pre-order on my website. They are a dye to order option, which means that if you order them, it can take one to two weeks processing and dyeing and shipping time before it gets to you. Um, I've been averaging a week or less, but I am about to go out of town for this show, so it might be closer to two weeks right now, but next week I'll be back in town. So go ahead and click over there and you can see all of my different versions. I have a couple different like fall golds and um, gold and uh, like whiskey kind of colors and oranges and paprikas. And then I have like a raindrop kit is what it's called, which is like a teal aqua and silvers and white. And then I am doing the girly set. This is all I have done of my floozy cardigan, you guys. It came out almost a week ago, last Friday, and I had pre-ordered it before it was released, so I was all ready to go, but I just hadn't cast on even my swatch yet until the pattern came out. So I finally got around to casting on the sweater this week, and then I've been working on my socks and my Path to Wonderland shawl, so I didn't get anything done. <laughs> so all I've done is the ribbing for the neckband. I have a long ways to go, but I'm very excited about it. So for this, this sweater pattern, it is a cardigan, and you use three different colors. You can use solids or semi-solids as well, but it is designed to go with indie dyed yarn, and the body was designed in a speckled yarn, and so all of my kits have a speckle as the body, and then two semi-solids or solids as the 
color work that you do in the yoke. So my body is gonna be knit out of La Vie en Rose, which is my new um, pink rosy speckle from this summer's French collection. I am hardcore obsessed with this uh, colorway. It is my new favorite right now in the shop. And I absolutely love its girly, soft lightness. It has a very minimalistic speckle, so it's not a real heavy speckle, just a few little bits here and there but it's knitting up absolutely gorgeous. And this is my first time seeing it knit up because it's pretty new and so I've sold several skeins of it but no one sent me photos yet. And so this is the first time I've gotten to see it knit and I love it. And then I am pairing that in the girly set with Vintage Vixen, which is a really deep magenta and wine tonal. So really, really nice like deep dark pink to kind of go with that soft pink speckle. And then the contrast color or the other contrast color, I should say, the third color I'm using, is just a solid white. So this is an undyed, just solid, super soft white sock yarn from my shop. I am going to start offering undyed skeins um, that are just gonna be a solid white in just a few of my bases. There, there won't be in everything, but just a few of my bases, I will be starting to offer this soon this fall, I think. So you can purchase an undyed skein to go with your dyed skeins as well. Um, and they're still uh, soft and washed and processed and everything, so it's still gonna be like ready to knit when you get it, but it just won't have any variation in the whites. It'll just be a completely solid white. And so I am using those three colors for my floozy cardigan, and I cannot wait. I am also taking this down to the yarn crawl this weekend because I really want to work on it in the car or at the show and make some more progress on my floozy because it's gonna be so pretty. It is a color work sweater, so you do have to work with multiple colors in the yoke, but you don't have to do any stranded or fair isle knitting with this. It is all slip stitches, which means you only work one color at a time, one color per round, and then you just slip some colors and that pulls the color up or down into the previous row or the next row. Um, so that way it looks like you've got a fair isle yoke going on with like multiple stranded colors going on, but it's really only one color per round, so it's much easier, a lot less intimidating if you're a color work beginner. This would be an excellent sweater to start on, and then the body is just stuck in it, so very, very easy. I highly recommend you go get the pattern. I will put a link to it below. I'm also gonna, um, the shop link that I'm putting at the top of the links section in the description box, my shop link, is going to be to the floozy sets so that you can see the sets and get them pre-ordered. And then if you're not interested in the floozy sets and you just wanna look at the rest of my website, just click on the icon at the top, my little logo at the top will take you to my homepage or the sidebar menu will take you to all the different sections of my shop. So you can see my floozy kits up there. So that is what I have been working on knitting. Now let's talk about what I have been fantasy knitting. First of all, when I was looking for the Path to Wonderland shawl and just looking at all these different garter stitch shawls online, um, a friend of mine recommended a shawl and I'm probably gonna butcher the name of it, but I'll put a link to the pattern below. I believe it's called Pasta Giata. It looks very Italian and that is my best guess at how to pronounce it but it is just two color rectangular garter stitch shawl with some really cool like diagonal stripes in it. It's very, very easy, simple, like TV knitting, car knitting, I'm sick and don't wanna think, I just wanna like sit here and knit while I half fall asleep, that kind of knitting. And um, I specifically told her I wanted something to knit on when I was drinking wine in the evenings and starting to feel a little bit tipsy but not enough to like stop knitting yet, but tipsy enough that I don't wanna work on my, um, color color work yoke sweater or like a really complicated heel turn of a sock or whatever. I don't want to have to think and count and like stress if I make a mistake. I just want garter stitch easy shawls, but I still want them to be pretty and something I'd wear and preferably something I'd use with indie dyed yarn. And she was like, I know what you need in it and told me about this pattern. So I have chosen, I went stash diving for this one so that I would not purchase any new yarns and I wouldn't take anything from my shop. And I um, decided to use up a skein of Malabrigo that I had. And this is technically a speckle colorway, but it's so heavily speckled that it almost looks like a variegated colorway. Um, there's almost no white space in it because of all the colors, but I just love it. It's called Carnival and it is their single ply merino fingering. So I'm going to use this for my main color. And then the contrast color, I decided to just use some inexpensive solid white um, Deborah Norville sock yarn that I had in my stash. I've had this in stash for years and I've knit several socks from this um, type of sock yarn, especially back several years ago, I went through a really like um, 
really tight financially period where my husband and I were really penny pinching and he got laid off from work. This was several, several years ago, but he'd gotten laid off from his job unexpectedly and then it took him several months to find a new one and I had just switched salons. We'd just gotten married and within three months of getting married, he lost his job. I switched salons and did not think I'd lose a clientele and I lost like over half of my clientele, which totally shocked me and freaked me out. So I had to rebuild my clientele. He was searching for a job and not able to find one for a while. So we went through a very, very um, rough period where there was no money for fancy yarn. There was very little money for any yarn. And so I had to learn how to go back to my roots and knit from um, acrylic yarns and like big box store yarns, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Um, but I had started to cultivate a taste for nicer yarns and then I was like, that is out the window. So this is 50% superwash merino, 25% rayon made from bamboo, and 25% nylon. So of the inexpensive sock yarns, it's one of the nicer ones. If you are needing something on a budget, I highly recommend the Deborah Norville Premier, it's from Premier Yarns, but it's the Deborah Norville Serenity Sock Weight. Um, merino, bamboo, and nylon. They make really hard wearing beautiful socks in uh, mostly solid colors. She has a few um, self-striping, I think, as well. But anyways, I still had a couple of skeins of this left over, and there's some Phoebe hair on this. Thanks, Phoebe. Um, and so I'm gonna put that together because this was such a busy speckle. I really wanted something that would just ground it and kind of brighten it because it's very, very dark. And I thought the white would really help to pick up on the little tiny flashes of white space that you see there. So that's gonna be my passeggiata. I have not cast it on yet, but I got it caked up and ready to go. Okay, I cannot wait to share with you this last thing that I'm fantasy knitting so hard right now. If you've been watching my Instagram TV channel, which is IGTV, um, if you haven't, I highly recommend you go check it out, but if you've been watching it, you may have already seen me talk a little bit about one of these projects because the other day I did a magazine sneak peek of the new Pom Pom, Pom Pom magazine. I have never ever purchased one of these magazines. I've never knit anything from their magazines. I was familiar with them. I'd seen people talk about them on knitting podcasts, but I was kind of scared off from the like, I think it costs like $21 or something to get a physical copy shipped to you in the United States of this um, magazine. It comes from the UK, but they do have a branch in Austin, Texas, so you at least get it from here, but you have to order it on the UK's website and do the conversion and all that stuff. And um, the nice thing is you get a digital copy and the hard copy, and I really love having an actual hard copy of my knitting books and patterns. So I prefer whenever possible to actually purchase the hard copy of the magazine to purchase the book, unless I just like only want one pattern. If I only like one pattern and I'm just gonna knit the one, then I'll just buy it on Ravelry if it's available. But for some magazines that aren't available or if it's not available yet on Ravelry, but you can go ahead and get it in the magazine form. Or if I like more than one pattern, I'll usually just get the hard copy because I really like looking at pictures. I have this like little kid thing where I just love picture books. And so I get really inspired. A lot of my fantasy knitting is me just looking through old pattern books or magazines that I've purchased and keep on my shelf and looking for inspiration, pattern ideas, color ideas, etc. So I really like the hard copies because it's more fun for me than just looking through Ravelry. Although I'm not gonna lie, I love Ravelry and I can disappear down the rabbit trail for hours on that site. It is so much fun and so addicting. And then it's so bad for you because you're like, it's only a $6 pattern, it's only an $8 pattern, but then you buy 10 of them and you're like, well, holy crap, this is like, this costs way more than dinner out. I should have just purchased the book or whatever. <laughs> But anyways, I kept seeing this advertised before the actual magazine came out and people talking about this moon sweater that's on the cover. And I was like, I'm obsessed with the moon. This looks amazing. I've always wanted to try this. I've only heard rave reviews of this magazine from everyone that's ever purchased it. So I'm just gonna order the whole copy and get the whole thing and enjoy it. So glad I did. It is 100% worth it. It just feels amazing in your hands. There are fun articles to read. There's a recipe for a moonset pancake. Heck yes, I am totally gonna try this. Look at this thing, you guys. It looks divinely delicious. I'm totally trying that. I hope you got to see that before I took it down. There's um, a thing about how to make a moon garland out of mixed media paper and yarn. It's so fun. I'm definitely gonna be trying that for my booth soon. And then there's a bunch of patterns. And I really liked all of the little, I really enjoy when a book or a pattern writes a 
pretty good sized description of the pattern where they talk about like the inspiration behind it, how they chose the yarns, and they just give you a real feel for the pattern. I don't like when it's just like, here's a pattern name and then here's all the specs and the gauge and all that. And this one, they wrote like a good paragraph or two about each pattern. So you really get to understand like what the designer was thinking or where, why they named it what they did or how you choose colors for it or whatever else or why they picked that particular fiber content. And I love it. I love, love, love when magazines do that. So I think this was highly, highly worth it. And there are like four or five patterns in here that I'm absolutely, totally going to cast on. Um, the first one I wanted to show you, um, don't worry, you won't see any of the pattern specs in here. It just shows you the picture. But this is the beanie and fingerless glove set. And let me see what they are called. Moon Dust is what it's called. Here's a better picture of the beanie on somebody. I am obsessed, you guys. I love this. It looks so easy and quick, and I adore knit hats. And fingerless gloves are like my other favorite thing to knit. And I love that they're in like this really cool kind of slate tonally gray color, but I could also see it being really gorgeous in a deep wine like Vintage Vixen or um, Dragon's Breath, which is a really spicy red or really just about anything. Any kind of tonal would look great on this or even a speckle, I think. So I am absolutely going to knit that. It's a fingering weight. I just haven't picked my colors yet. And then the other thing that I am hardcore excited about and the whole reason that I bought this anyways is for this moon sweater. Oh my god, I love it so, so much, you guys. It's the best thing ever. This sweater is epic. I am 100% obsessed. And um, I love this lady on the front that's modeling it. It looks so good with her salt and pepper hair. And um, it gives you a real feel for how the sweater fits and just how comfy it looks. It looks so cozy. And I love the colors that they chose in the original hand-dyed yarns. So the background is kind of like a deep navy tonal. Oops, sorry, Phoebe. Sitting on her tail. And then um, the contrast color for the moons is like this really rich, soft, uh, semi-solid gold color, like yellows and golds. I love the colors they chose, but I'm really having a hard time deciding what I'm going to pick for mine. I definitely want to make it out of my own hand-dyed yarn and use it, again, as a shop sample, but also just because I want it to be my hand-dyed yarn and my moon sweater, and it's going to be my special knit this fall. I'm thinking about making it as an early birthday present to myself, even though my birthday's not till November. I'm also not going to be able to cast it on right away, so it might be my birthday sweater this year. We'll see. But I'm having a hard time deciding what to do. So I have a couple of colors I want to show you guys. And then I have an idea for a new color that I've never dyed before, but it's percolating in my mind and I wanted to tell you guys about it. So the first thing I was thinking is I just created this colorway this week, um, or I should say I recreated this colorway this week. This is called Dorian. If you are familiar with the classic work, the picture of Dorian Gray, it's a gray tonal. So I named it Dorian and it's a little bit darker and a bit more um, of a neutral gray than my colorway that's already in my shop called Disappear in a Cloud of Steam. Disappear in a Cloud of Steam is slightly lighter. It's still not super light, but it's a lighter gray, a bit more of a mist gray. It actually, next to Dorian, it looks like the perfect like ombre from a light gray into a medium gray. And so they look really great together for an ombre effect, but they don't have enough contrast if you're looking to do like the Path to Wonderland in them would not be good because there's just not enough contrast. But for an ombre or gradient effect, it's really great. But I love this one because it's a bit more neutral and a bit darker. And this was actually an old recipe that I had done before I even had my shop open two years ago when I first started dyeing yarn. I had dyed this up while I was in a yarn dyeing class I was taking online and I was just playing around with color combos and recipes and this was a colorway that I created. I liked it but I had also I had already created Disappear in a Cloud of Steam and at the time I preferred the look of Disappear in a Cloud of Steam and I was like I don't need two grays and I didn't even know at that point if I was absolutely for sure going to open a shop or if I was just doing this for myself. So I put this colorway on the back burner. Um, it didn't even have a name it just it's in my recipe book, but I only dyed one skein of it, and then I sold it to a friend for really cheap and was like, here, just take this off my hands. Because it was on like really cheap wool that I got from like Knit Picks or somewhere. It wasn't any of my nice stuff. And then I recently was challenged by another indie dyer to go back through my old recipe books and try recreating something that I had either never had in the shop or hadn't had in the shop since like the very early days. So I went through my first couple notes um, that I have in my notebook, and I found Dorian's recipe, and I recreated it and was like, 
why do I quit creating that? That is so pretty. So this is on my Dragonfly BFL, um, the Superwash BFL and Nylon Sock Yarn. And I think this would be really great, especially in my Foxy base or my Fairy Wing base, or even I'm thinking about doing it in my Dryad Sock, which is an MCN fingering, Merino Cashmere and Nylon, I think is what I'm gonna do because that's the fiber content they use in this sweater originally. And I absolutely love my Dryad base. It is one of my favorite things to work with and I've never made a sweater out of it, just shawls and socks. So I'm gonna give it a try and see how it does in a sweater. But I'm thinking about Dorian. The problem with Dorian is I don't think it's dark enough. I really wanted the night sky to be very, very dark. And I love this, but I'm not sure I love it enough. One thing that made me think about it though is I am seriously contemplating for my light moons to do this gorgeous skein of opera glasses. This is a really, really light beige kind of champagne tonal. It has the tiniest little flicker of almost pink to it, but then it's really more of like a pearly, beigey, hint of gray, hint of pink, but mostly beige tonal. And it's super, super light. And I put them next to each other and was like, heart palpitations started happening. And I was like, this might need to be my sweater right here. Look at how pretty these are together. They're just stunning. This is on my fairy wing base, which makes the opera glasses really glow. So I'm gonna try it on the MCN, see if I like it. I may switch to fairy wing for my sweater if I decide I like that better. Or I might even mix bases and do the body in MCN and the contrast color in fairy wing, who knows? We'll see. So that was one idea. My other idea for a background color is my Samhain colorway, which I'm going to be dyeing up more of for this fall. This is actually on a worsted weight, so I would be doing it in a fingering, but it's the same color. And this is like a charcoal and black tonal. So it is black, but it's a semi-solid black and it has a lot of grays and charcoal in it. So it's not a really like super dark, deep black. And it has a lot of those gray flashes to kind of add some light and interest. But I felt like that would be really good and more like the inky night sky and give it a darker contrast um, to my moons. So that's another concept or another option. And the other thing I was thinking about was for my contrast color, I can't decide if I like fairy wing or the, excuse me, the opera glasses better or if I like Pink Moonbeam better. This is an absolutely stunning color as well, and I actually already have a pullover knit just out of this color, no contrast colors. I knit my Jolie pullover last year, and um, you can see it on some of the early podcast episodes that I did back in January and February. I wore it a couple times. Um, it just has like a little lace yoke and then a stockinette body, and it was absolutely heavenly to knit. And so I love this very soft, this is such a soft pastel pink that it's almost not there. It's like whisper pink it's so light and it's called pink moonbeam so i was like moonbeam yarn from the moon motif is kind of perfect and it looks really stunning with Samhain, and it looks pretty stunning with dorian although i think i like the opera glasses better with dorian but either way so i think i've narrowed it down to oh goodness i think i've narrowed it down to these two for my moons one of these i just can't decide which one and i'm not totally sure on that i might also go a different route but i'm leaning towards one of those two but the other background color I really am thinking about is, I haven't dyed it yet, but I had this really great idea. Actually, when I saw this sweater, I loved the blues that they had in their background color, but it was a little too navy for me. And I thought, I think I would love that if I did like a really dark teal tonal and then glaze it in black. So my thinking is that I would put a couple shades of aqua and teal, like really, really dark, super saturated, and then put uh, maybe a couple coats of navy over that so it gets just like that extra depth from the navy, a little pop of blue, but it's still very tealy and has that green present to balance out the blue. Because I want it to be more blue than green of a teal, but I really want it to be like teal, not blue. And then taking, once I get several coats of greens and teals and blues on there, then taking that and glazing it in a really heavy black glaze. So maybe even like two or three pots of black glaze, I think would be amazing. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. I think I'm going to try it when I get back from DFW, which is the yarn crawl that I'm going to this weekend. When I get back from Texas next week, I think I might try that um, on a play date in the kitchen and just see how it goes. And then if I don't like it, if I don't like it for the sweater, but it's pretty, I'll put it in the shop. If I hate it and it's ugly, I will overglaze it or put it in the mad science lab or something. We'll see. But I think it's gonna be really pretty and I think it would look phenomenal with the opera glasses or the pink moonbeam, either one. So, um, I am going to take a little pause here and edit this part out because I wanna grab some dragon's breath. I just remembered. Oh, where is it, where is it? Shoot.
There is one other thought that I had for the moon sweater. And I like the idea, but I'm also not in love. With, I'm sorry, can we start that over? Because I think I was putting that down. There is one other thought that I had on my moon sweater, and I love the idea, but I'm not sure that I love it enough to do my sweater in it personally. I think I like the idea of the teal with black tonal or the black or gray background, but I did have one really like crazy out there way to just shake this pattern up and make it totally unique. So if somebody wants to do this idea, you can totally order some yarn from my shop and steal my idea. Um, I, I totally think you should. And I might like, I might actually knit it. In fact, I love this pattern so much, I'm seriously contemplating making two if I can't make up my mind. But I really thought, okay, so everyone I've been seeing, I've been seeing people pick out um, colors for this too online, and most of the people are doing something similar to this, or they're doing like a solid black with like a light speckly moon or something like that, which is gonna be gorgeous. And I love the dark background with the light colored moons, I really do. And if you want it to look like the nighttime sky, this is probably the best way to go. So that's what I'm leaning towards. However, I had this crazy fun idea that I thought it would be really awesome to make the moon, to invert the colors and make the background a really, really light color and the moon a darker color. And the dark color I want to use is Dragon's Breath. This is um, my orange and red, or my red orange tonal. It looks like fire. It looks like... Um, a crackling fire in October. It's so beautiful. And it's really, really just intensely orange. And I think it would be amazing to do this as the moon to create a blood moon effect, right? Like a red orange blood moon would be so sick. And I think it would be amazing to have fairy wing as the background, or I keep calling this fairy wing because that's the base, the opera glasses as the background with the blood moon. That would just be a way to invert the colors and just be totally outside the box and totally unique and different. The other idea is to use um, my Samhain, which is my chocolate, or my chocolate, my black um, tonal that I just showed you, and use that with uh, Dragon's Breath to be the blood moon. And I kind of love this. I kind of love the blood moon idea. I just can't decide if I'm like totally up for that because I'm really obsessed with this like teal and black glaze idea with the fairy wing or the pink moonbeam. So I'm really having a hard time, you guys. I've gone back and forth on it. I'm like, blood moon, regular moon, teals, blacks, I don't know. I am a little concerned because I haven't dyed it yet, I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna wait and see how my teal tonal comes out when I do it next week. Hopefully next week I'll get to it. I have to dye yarn clubs and some sweater kits first, but after I get that done, I'm hoping to be able to get to playing around with my new teal idea. And if I can do that, I think it might also look really pretty with the dragon's breath. I'm just gonna need to make sure because this is such a darker color than the other moons that I'm considering, I would really need to make sure that there was enough contrast between this and the teal because these motifs are really, really small. So if you don't have enough contrast there, it's gonna be really, really tough for you to pick out all of those little peery patterns and dots and fleur de lis and all of that stuff. So I wanna make sure that there's a really high contrast between my colors. Speaking of contrast between colors, a few people have asked me about choosing colors for projects, how I go about that and how I do that. We don't have time to go into that today, but I am absolutely going to be doing some videos on that coming up, both about choosing color, colors in general, as well as specific tips for how to make sure that you get enough con contrast Excuse me, I can't talk today. <laughs> um, how you get enough contrast for your color work projects like the floozy cardigan that I'm doing and um, the Path to Wonderland shawl that I'm doing, the moon sweater that I'm going to be doing, all of that, as well as just um, like stripes or color block projects. So we'll be talking about how to choose colors and some tips and tricks that'll make it a lot easier for you. And um, I'm really looking forward to those videos. So stay tuned for those. We are gonna be doing some more of those after we finish our wool series probably. I might even jump into them before. I've really been enjoying the wool series we've been doing, but honestly, I am I have so many new ideas all the time and you guys gave me so many great ideas last week on the podcast and I've been hearing feedback on Instagram and Facebook too that I am just really gonna have to get my butt into gear and get some videos turned out. I'm hoping that eventually I can get to the point where I'm doing more than one video a week but right now because I'm still juggling my job at the hair salon with dyeing yarn and my business is picking up and I just opened up wholesale orders to yarn shops and all these other things, 
I just don't have time to do two videos a week. I'm lucky to get one a week out. So we're just gonna keep being really good at what I can do consistently. And then when I feel like I've grown enough that I can handle it, we'll try to add extra videos. But right now, just one a week. So the good news is we have tons of content for years to come. I can't imagine anytime soon that we're gonna run out of stuff to talk about on this podcast. But you know, we'll see. We'll always be looking for new ideas, but I have a lot of really good ones, so I'm excited. So that's about all I have for you guys today. I was really, really excited to share Pom Pom and the Moon Sweater with you. I cannot wait. I can't pronounce the name of it. They gave a pronunciation guide and I forgot what it was. It's like the name of a goddess in like South America or something. The Mayan Jaguar goddess. Ishel is how they're saying it. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it isn't spelled like that at all. You wouldn't know that from looking at it, but Ishel, I can't wait to make it. I think I might just call my moon my moon goddess or moon phase sweater or something. I'm not sure, something like that. But I cannot wait to cast it on, but first I gotta dye up some yarn. So last little bit of business to tell you guys is, I've mentioned several times that I'm going to Texas this weekend. So this video is actually uh, going to be coming out this weekend while I'm in Texas. So I will already be there. If you are in the Sherman McKinney or Dallas Fort Worth area, please come to the DFW Yarn Crawl. Uh, it started last week and it is going on this weekend. This is the last weekend of it. So August 24th and 25th, I will be in Texas. And then I believe there are some shops participating on the 26th as well, but that's the day that I have to come home. So I will just be there on the 24th and 25th. On the 24th, I'm going to be at a yarn shop called A Balanced Skein in Sherman, Texas. And on the 25th, I'm going to be at the Tupps Brewery in McKinney, Texas. And there are going to be a lot of other indie dyers there at the Balanced Skein show that I'm doing. There's going to be another um, small business fiber farm there called Goth Farm Yarns. And she does undyed yarns from her animals that she raises on the farm. And they're absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And I've been following her on Instagram and getting to know her chatting about our show coming up. And I cannot wait to get my hands on her fiber. I am really worried that I'm going to spend all my profits at her booth buying all this gorgeous undyed, really high quality luxury fibers. So go check her out on Instagram as well. But if you're in Texas or can come down for the weekend, please, please come see me at either one or both of those locations. Check out the other dyers. When I'm at the Tupps Brewery, there will be several other dyers as well. Um, I think other dyers. I know there's going to be other yarn for sale there. It's not just me. And at the, a balance gain, it's a yarn shop, so she'll have lots of big commercial companies as well as um, the Fiber Farm and me will be the featured artists that day. So you'll have lots of options at both of those locations for different things, not just me. Um, and I'm going to have a lot of really awesome yarn there. I'm going to have some new colorways that just came out in the last few weeks. I'm going to have um, a bunch of old restocked colorways that are some of my favorites. I'm going to have some shawl patterns for the Tous les Jours shawl that I did on the podcast a while back. I'm going to have so much fun stuff. I'm going to have sock blanks. I just cannot, cannot wait. So please, please come out and check it out if you can. If you're not in Texas, you can still go and check out my calendar of events on the website. And in the sidebar menu of my website, there's a little um, event calendar or something like that that you can click on and it'll tell you where I'm going to be going in the coming months. I have not added this event to it yet, but I am planning to soon. But I am really excited to share with you guys that I made a very big I, I crossed a big business threshold and made a goal of mine that has been a goal of mine since before I started my business. And that was, I have wanted to vend and sell my yarn at one of the big Stitches shows. If you're not familiar, Stitches is a very large yarn show where um, you purchase a ticket and there are literally hundreds of vendors there. Thousands and thousands of people come. They're really huge yarn conventions where you can get your hands on some of the best indie dyed, um, undyed fiber farm luxury product yarn as well as larger yarn companies. You'll you'll find all of the big names there usually, um, or a lot of the big names there. A lot of indie dyers like me and smaller, like really unique, cool things that you can find there. But it's a very large show and there are not any in my area, so I have to travel to get to any of these ones. There's some on each coast, there's ones in the middle of the country. And I'm very excited to announce that I got accepted into the 2019 Stitches Midwest show in Chicago. Yay! I'm so excited, you guys. I don't think you can understand, probably, unless you are an indie dyer as well, or you've, I'm sure you can think of a time when you had a really big goal for your business or your life. But if you are an indie dyer, you probably understand why this is such a big deal to me. 
but if you're not, just know this was a very big goal of mine since before my business was officially launched when I was first just percolating the idea and picking my name and I already was like, I am going to stitches, damn it, one of these days this is going to happen. I tried to get in this year, but I just didn't feel like I was at a point in my business where I was prepared, which is fair because it's only my second year in business and I haven't even reached the two-year mark yet. So that's kind of fair. And this is great because it gives me a whole year to plan because it won't be until the end of July, beginning of August next year. So I've got a whole year to plan and start putting aside inventory and getting ready for it. And so I can't wait. Mark your calendars for Chicago 2019 summer. We're going to be there and you're definitely going to want to come see all the new things I have plus all of the really great stuff that I'm going to have in stock and come meet me, say hi. I cannot wait. I'm so, so excited. But I have some other events coming up before then that will be on my event calendar that you can check out. And if you would like your local yarn store to carry potion yarns, I have just recently opened up my shop to wholesale orders. So please, please ask your local yarn store to contact me about setting up a wholesale account and getting some potion yarns in your local yarn store. I am just starting with wholesale, so I am limiting my wholesale slots to just a few vendors to start off while I kind of get my feet wet, get a feel for it, and make sure that I can keep up with the demand. So if they are interested, they need to contact me right away because I've already had a lot of people contacting me and I'm already working with some shops, getting some wholesale orders set up. So they're currently open, but don't delay. And then um, hopefully you can get a little bit of potion yarns delivered right to your city. That would be awesome because then you get to see it and feel it in person and we get to share the love with people who don't have the ability to order online right now or are nervous about ordering online. So it's a really, really great way to help support your local yarn store, support me, support your other knitters by getting them even more varieties of yarns in the shop. All right, I'm going to wrap up this rather long-winded podcast. I meant for this to be really short and fast, and then I just had so many exciting things to share with you, and I got really long-winded. So I apologize for the long video this week, but hopefully you had fun looking at all of my projects. And leave me a comment below. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. You have to answer the question, what would make you want to purchase a yarn club box or a yarn subscription box? What do you like about them? What do you not like? What has worked for you in the past? What doesn't, etc. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can be eligible to win the giveaway. But it is now time to cast off. Love you.